there has been a breakthrough over the past, you know, couple of three years, and it's been the fact, the rea realization, which was, you know, uh, um, um, suspected by some, that, that by the time you diagnose the disease, that is, by the time you forget your first word, by the time you go to the first time to the doctor and say, look, I have a problem with my memory, or I have a problem, I'm, you know, oh, my husband got lost, at, you know, uh, at home, and he couldn't find the bathroom or something. At that time, the horse is out of the barn. So the disease starts 20 to 30 years prior to that disease, you know, defining event, diagnosis defining event. So what does that mean? It means that we absolutely need to find a way to figure out who's going to get it, all right? And eventually we're all going to get, you know, eventually if you live long enough, you know, the, the probability will increase, all right? But there are some people with have certain genes whereby, you know, they don't, all right? So, but let alone the genetic differences and so on, and special cases, I mean, that's, very, you know, by the time you get to 80, 90 year old, you know, the, 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 there's going to be an overwhelming number of patients who will have it, all right? So we have to act before then. And so uh, early diagnosis and preventive treatments, preventive approaches to protect, to prevent the disease are very, are going to be vital. And also uh, prevention and also early treatments so that you will be able, you won't let the disease, you know, go so far so as to prevent any further uh, uh, improvements because some of the, the, the critical regions of the brain have been altered and then they cannot come back. Okay, so in terms of biomarkers, uh, um, there is a we have we can do a very good job now in doing uh, scans, uh, brain scans on people that may tell us uh, some early pathological changes in Alzheimer's disease that may be typical of Alzheimer's and other dementias. Uh, doing, for example, a, a, a amyloid scan or a, a tau scan to detect some of the things that, that once could be seen only in a pathology, all right? Now we can do that early. The problem is that a lot of normal people, non-cognitively impaired, they also seem to have those um, things in the brain, all right? So how are you gonna decide who's going really gonna take it, you know? Which is, is, is the, brings us to the concept of cognitive reserve, all right? So there are some people whose brain is loaded with amyloid, but they're perfectly normal because they have so much brain to spare, because they have a, a perhaps a greater education than that's, that's someone else, so they've figured out ways through, edu through childhood and, and growing up to overcome any difficulty, any difficult transaction the neurons may have, all right? So they will not, you won't be able to tell that they're gonna be affected, although perhaps you know, the load of, of amyloid on their brain is exactly the same as the load of, uh, that in another person will cause complete dementia, all right? The other variable is what you do in life, all right? If you're a bricklayer, all right, and you're gonna, you've been laying bricks in all your life, chances are you're gonna be doing that even if you have some amyloid in your brain. But if you're a CEO of a company and you start to miss, you know, meetings and, and you know and know exactly what to do because of so-called executive dysfunction you're gonna they're gonna find you out pretty quickly yeah. all right so there's, there's all kinds of variables that complicate the the so what we would need is a true biomarker that is predictive for a r real disease you know but early enough that we can implement treatments so the treatments thus far have been the, the kind of disease modifying treatments have been uh, in under uh, uh, um, trials are trying to counteract the amyloid that accumulates, trying to f help the brain get rid of it. And the other one are, is trying to get rid of, to, to eliminate tau in the brain now. So the amyloid story is an interesting one because you know, people who have, a, a, in which the Alzheimer's disease runs in their family uh, this is called familial Alzheimer's disease and so on. They have mutations in the amyloid precursor protein gene that where the amyloid comes from, that they make a lot of it. And they make so much of it that the brain cannot get rid of it. And that's why it accumulates. So these people in their 30s and 40s will start to have symptoms, all right? So there is a problem of too much amyloid being made. Now in the, in the garden variety Alzheimer uh, dementia uh, picture, the problem is not overproduction. You make as much amyloid as, as, as anybody else. It's the problem is getting, the, the brain cannot get rid of it, 
all right? It's a problem of clearance of amyloid from the brain. That's 90%, 95% of the, of the people who get Alzheimer have that problem, you know? And that's where the vascular piece comes in, all right? I, as I pointed, I said in my talk, you know, about half of the patients who, who are diagnosed to have Alzheimer's disease during life, you know, once they go to autopsy, when they, the brain is cut up and really pathologists looked at, they will have vascular disease and amyloid disease, uh, amyloid uh, pathology together, all right? So the most common form of dementia is not really Alzheimer's disease, but it's a mixed pathology dementia. And people have studied this, and they actually found that there are five pathologies. They, they all play a role, in which amyloid and tau are only one piece of the puzzle. Okay, so that's what we need to be looking at as well. However, the vascular piece is important because it's preventable. So if there is one thing we can do, we know how to do, is to make our blood vessels better. And how can we do that? By taking certain medications and by, by diet, exercise, and, and, and the general you know, vascular health uh, uh, measures that have, have reduced the risk of stroke and, and, and heart attacks by you know, 20, 30, 40%. Uh, so that's what we know what we can do, and probably if we do that, we're going to also help the brain get rid of some of this amyloid, and perhaps m we may not counteract Alzheimer's disease, you know, go make it go away, but we may delay the onset. And all we hope for is to delay the onset, uh, because even one year, even two, three years, will have a tremendous economic impact, a tremendous you know, social impact on families and ca ca caregivers, you know before one goes into a nursing home, in other words, you know, delaying that point, that will be a great success.